Hello guys, welcome to Metten. Today we are going to discuss about the basics of abdominal incisions. So let's begin. First I am drawing the abdomen. This is the umbilicus. This is the co costal margins. The right and the left costal margins. This is the xiphoid process. And these are the anterior superior relax span of the two hips. Attached to the pubic tubercle. This is the abdomen. So what are the types of incisions? One we have along the right coastal margin. This one is called as the coacher's incision. Don't worry, I'll name it down. This is about the median incision, upper midline incision, lower midline incision. We have the paramedian incision. And then we have the McBurney's incision. And then the last, the transverse incision. Alright. The McBurney's incision is given along the McBurney's point through the McBurney's line naming it down this is the coacher's incision which is given in the subcostal subcostal margin and then we have the upper and lower midline incisions Then we have the paramedian incision, paramedian incision, we have a transverse incision, the last one we have is the, this is known as the McBurney's. burn is or is also called as a grid iron incision grid iron incision so we are going to discuss them one by one this is the coacher's incision upper midline and lower midline incisions paramedian incision mcburn is or, or grid iron incision and a transverse incision coming to the abdominal incisions these incisions are commonly given by surgeons to explore the abdominal cavity and perform the desired surgery. So, especially the UG students should have some idea about these incisions because these incisions may lead to incisional hernias. Coming to first one, the midline incision. So, the midline incision, this incision is given in the midline along the linea alba along the along linea alba it is easier to perform the incision above the umbilicus because it is wider in this region wider above the umbilicus the advantages of this incision are it is almost bloodless bloodless and no muscle fibers are cut no muscle fibers are cut and no nerves are injured no nerves are injured and it also gives access to both sides of the abdomen gives access to both sides of the abdomen so these are the advantages of this incision the disadvantage of supra umbilical, umbilical is incision is that healing is poor disadvantages these are the advantages so what are the disadvantages the supra umbilical incision healing is poor healing is poor and it may lead to incisional hernias incisional hernias the infra umbilical incision is safer because of the close approximity of the recti. The recti uh, will go for the close approximity and because of this the infra umbilical incision is much safer. So this is about the midline incision. Now we are going to look at the paramedian incision. Coming to paramedian incision.
this incision is advantageous than the median incision so it is better than the median incision better than the midline incision because in this the anterior wall of rectus sheath is exposed and incised about 1 inch lateral and parallel to the midline so we are not going along the midline we are going 1 inch lateral to the midline and we are incising the anterior wall of the rectus sheath so what happens is the anterior wall of the rectus sheath is freed from the tendinous insertions the rectus muscle is retracted laterally with its nerve supply intact and the posterior wall of the sheath is also exposed so the posterior wall of the sheath along with the fascia transversalis and peritoneum is then incised and the wound is closed in these layers so the paramedian incision in the uh, will result into post operative weakness and the occurrence of incisional hernia is minimal hence it is given most frequently so it is given laterally 1 inch uh, laterally 1 inch uh, to the midline and then they will incise the uh, anterior wall of the rectus sheath then they will go for the posterior wall of the rectus sheath along with the fascia transversalis and the peritoneum so what happens is in this one the post operative weakness is present post operative weakness is present and incisional hernia occurrence is minimal incisional hernia occurrence is minimal in this case hence it is given most frequently so this is about the paramedial incision now let's discuss about McBurney's incision or gridiron incision McBurney's or also called as the gridiron incision it is commonly given for appendicectomy removal of the appendicitis removal of the appendix commonly given for the appendicectomy it is an oblique incision made in the region of right iliac fossa above 2 inch to the medial of the anterior superior iliac spine we know the McBurney's line right from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus that is the McBurney's line and the McBurney's point is situated uh, lateral medial two third and lateral one third that is the McBurney's point and there the, the oblique incision is given this is known as the McBurney loss or gridiron incision so what happens the external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominals all these muscles are incised uh, the external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominal abdominus all these are inside and split in line they are all split in line hence it is also termed as muscle splitting incision muscle splitting incision the transversalis fascia and the parietal peritoneum are also incised to open the abdominal cavity so the incision is closed in layers this incision has no post operative weakness no post operative weakness so this is the advantage of McBurney's incision. Now coming to Kocher's incision. Coming to Kocher's incision. This incision is given along the right subcostal incision. This is also called as the right subcostal incision. It is given about 2 to 5 cm below and parallel below and parallel to the right coastal margin right coastal margin so this incision is used to, to explore the gallbladder and the associated ducts this incision done for the gallbladder and the associated ducts this is about the coacher's incision lastly we are discussing about the transverse incision coming to transverse incision So the transverse incision is given along the lower part of the abdomen lower part of the abdomen with a slight concavity upward like this slight concavity 
it is given along the 2 cm below the level of umbilicus along the line of venous along the line of venous it is given along it so it is used to explore the pelvic organs explore the pelvic organs and especially in surgeries related to the uterus and ovaries so this is about the basics of abdominal incisions if you like the video make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and subscribe to uh, share to your other friends thank you so much